Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Statewide Clinical Network Conversation Series. Uh, today, we are featuring the Cancer Statewide Clinical Network. My name is Tina Harden, and I am the Executive Director of Clinical Informatics and Innovation at the Commission on Excellence and Innovation in Health, or the CIH, as we like to refer to ourselves. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge that the land we meet on today, or the land certainly that I'm on today, is the land, traditional lands for the Ghana people and that we respect their spiritual relationship with their country. We also acknowledge the Ghana people as the custodians of the Adelaide region and that their cultural and heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Ghana people today. I'm just going to start now by giving a bit of an overview of the CIH and, uh, and then a bit of an overview of the statewide clinical networks before I hand over to our uh, chair of our statewide cancer clinical network, Ganesan. And so for those of you that are unfamiliar with the CIH, we are the lead agency for innovation in healthcare in South Australia. We bring consumers, clinicians, and other collaborators together to work towards our vision of together, let's create better healthcare for all South Australians. We have a, well, there we go. We have a portfolio of work that covers the clinical networks, which I'll describe in more detail in a moment. We have a partnerships team where we uh, aim to build and strengthen how we partnership and how the health system in South Australia partnerships across to really bring those great ideas to the forefront. We focus on patient reported measures, including outcomes and experience measures. We have a clinical informatics team really focused on how we deliver insights that can have an impact on healthcare and innovation that seeks new perspectives and solutions and um, uh, that have a sustainable impact for the health system in South Australia. The CIH statewide clinical networks uh, bring together a group of health professionals from a range of health service organisations, consumers and carers, all with an interest in a specific area of health and who are willing to work together collaboratively towards a goal of clinical service redesign for high quality care. They operate across the continuum of care, including private and public health se sectors and across all of our uh, South Australian local health networks. The statewide clinical networks identify and collaborate to resolve strategic problems that will lead to significant improvement in health outcomes for South Australians. Each network has a clinical and or consumer lead and a steering committee to develop the vision, goals and work program for that network. And we currently have eight of those. Uh, you can see them on the screen. There's a range um, from across, you can see we go, goes quite nicely across the continuum of care from chronic pain, clinical genomics, cardiac care through to urgent care, palliative care, and um, a couple others that I'll let you read for yourselves. The conversation series um, is happening at the moment through October and November in 2022. It's the first time we've run this series and uh, it's happening every Thursday. Um, or almost every Thursday, I should say, at one o'clock. And we are recording these, so you'll be able to catch up online whenever, or if you'd want to bring it to someone's attention who you think um, would benefit from viewing it, then you can direct them to our online space on YouTube or through our CIH website. It's really providing an opportunity for um, the clinical network and a broader community of people to come together and explore um, the various topics of the clinical networks. So in case you missed uh, one of them, as I said, you can catch up online very soon. Uh, we've been running these since 6th of October. And today we are on the, our second, third to last um, conversation series with cancer. And please make sure you book in if you haven't already for the urgent care next week and uh, on the 17th of November and the cardiac care program the week after. We also uh, just want to make sure that you note that these sessions are being recorded. And so we please ask that you put your microphones on mute. And um, at the end of uh, the presentation by Ganesan, um, we will stop recording. We'll ask you and invite you to um, turn your mics on, turn your cameras on, and we'll go into a informal chat and Q&A session with our um, presenter for today. And um, but please do feel welcome uh, to put your questions into chat as you think of them, uh, if you're like me and you might forget them by the time we get to the end of the presentation. Otherwise, hold them over and we'll um, ask them at the end when we stop recording. So 
now I'm going to hand over to our chair of our statewide clinical network, uh, Ganesan, and um, uh, over to you. Thank you, Tina. It's, it's great to see a big turnout for this conversation series for the Cancer Network. I'll try and share my screen before I start talking again. I'd like to uh, shout out Sophie, who has been a pillar for us in the Cancer Network as a network advisor, and Emma Tolson, who has gone away uh, to do her uh, occupational training when she's back. She'll, she, she's been with the group for almost 12 months or so. Without these two, I can't imagine being part of the Cancer Network, how smoothly it has been running since its establishment. As you heard from Tina, uh, there are eight networks and cancer is one of them. Cancer was one of the first networks to be established as early as January 2020. And we all know what happened two months later. During the initial waves of COVID, March, April, that's when we managed to set up a steering committee involving 23 members across different clinical expertise and consumers as well. And we managed to meet pretty regularly. Like everyone who has been affected by COVID, Cancer Network was affected immensely as well. We managed to meet only twice in the last three years or so. In, in person, which shows how challenging it has been to bring people together between COVID, between the clinical commitments and having opportunity to meet together and develop various things related to the network. We all start when, in, during our first meeting, we started with this uh, work plan of setting up vision for the network and we narrowed down to having excellence and innovation in cancer care for all South Australians. We wanted to be inclusive, we wanted to be statewide and not necessarily focusing just on public sector. We want private sector, metro, regional, no one should be left behind. The next part of the work plan was to try and set up the aims of the cancer network. Again, cancer plays a big role in majority of our life. If we have been affected with cancer diagnosis, either personally or through the family members. So we wanted to improve the health outcomes of all South Australians affected by cancer through the list of ways there you can see on the screen, being person-centered, compassionate and equitable care across the spectrum and across uh, different health networks, being collaborative, working through partnerships with different case key stakeholders, as well as using highest level evidence to drive excellence and innovation in cancer care. We also wanted to focus on safety and quality of care delivered and one of the key roles of the Cancer Network was to provide strategic expertise, especially around the clinical care provider. So this, is, this was one of our first piece of work we started with when we met some, sometime in April 2020, when we had our first meeting at the steering committee level. And as part of other activities, we set up different advisory groups. The first one was data advisory group led by Professor Davy Roder. Many of you would know he's, uh, uh, he's been here uh, uh, more than 40 years as the population level epidemiologist working in cancer data. We also established three other advisory groups, nursing led by various senior cancer nursing group across the state. SA Cancer Pharmacists, they already had a group. It became easier to co-op them under the Cancer Network. Allied Health Advisory Group is still an evolution and process. As you could imagine, Allied Health means multiple different specialties and it became quite challenging to get the group together. It's still not fully established. The other major piece of working group or committee we established was to bring all the head of units in the public health 
networks and we managed to get the private sector radiation therapy head of unit as well and we have been meeting for the last two years uh, once every two months or so this is an informal group where we share our successes our plans for the future as well as help each other out if there are any challenges this is how our cancer network is existing although this has been the core members who are working within the cancer network as as a group i feel that the network is a loose entity i feel the membership is anyone with interest in cancer if they live in sa they're part of cancer network don't need an official title as a steering committee member to be involved in anything related to our network and just reiterating what are the key roles performed by the cancer network at this stage we see it as the peak body to support clinical service at a statewide level strategize and plan for ongoing activities and future one of the key roles is to coordinate the development of various policies models of care and clinical care pathways I see cancer network playing a major advocacy role both for consumers and health professionals. One of the key success I would like to say is the way we manage to bring people together across the table and having a common place where people could share their successes and challenges. Another important role is to establish partnerships between health networks governmental and other organizations in the next few minutes i'll show you what projects we have done successfully what is ongoing and what we have in plan for the future and how did we get there where we are at the moment so sa cancer clinical network is being incubated by the ceh we heard about that to tina but there are other key partners department of health well-being sa and local health networks regional support service cancer council has been a key partner for some of the work we are planning to do or already doing i mean and of course clinical research is part of clinical care especially clinical trials and that's where university support has become a key partner outside the state Cancer Australia, and many of you know Professor Dorothy Keefe, who was the previous chair for SA Cancer Services. Now she is leading Cancer Australia and she's got soft corner for SA. And we met a few times and identified areas to work together, including Australian Cancer Plan. And we had the opportunity to work with the director of Victorian Clini Clinical Quality Registries through Monash University, Professor John Spotberg. A, a shout out for him. He's visiting us and giving a talk on the 21st of November. If you're interested, there is an even bright link available. We can share it again at the end of the presentation. And through his uh, uh, partnership, through the partnership with the Clinical Quality Registry in Victoria, SA Cancer Clinical Registry, we are developing some of the quality indicators for common cancers which don't exist in, through the Victorian Registry. And they're guiding us with Delphi process and using the experience what they've done in Victoria. And we're hoping to have a faster uh, time to get our quality indicators ready. Of course, New South Wales Cancer Institute and uh, David Caro, again, many of you would know, he was the previous chair of Cancer Institute. They were kind enough to meet with the processes and the pathway they have been through to develop the cancer plan in New South Wales and given us enormous impetus in pushing on with our SA cancer plan. And lastly, we have been collaborating with Western Australia uh, through an MDT platform program and the only states we haven't had much interaction as yet is Tasmania and Northern Territory and ACT. The Queensland we explored having an MDT tool what they have developed and potentially still being discussed and possibly be used in the future within SA. There are key partners I put on the left side here, Adult Genetic Unit within Carlin, and 
you may have heard about Bragg Comprehensive Cancer Center coming along very nicely, uh, sitting on top of the proton therapy in SAMRI 2 building and SAMRI per se. We had a number of uh, collaborative discussions and potential grants being submitted to through SAMRI as well. I, I call them as key partners throughout the last three years. People from these groups have contributed, have interacted, or given us ideas to pursue some projects. So one of the key pieces of work the Cancer Network did when there was a big surge in COVID cases, both nationally and in the state, was to develop some guidelines on what to do in terms of clinical care. 2020, when the initial waves were here, borders shut down, patients were not seen in the clinic, what do we do in terms of cancer care delivery? That was one of the guidance document developed at this stage. When the vaccines came up last year in 2021, those challenges seen by clinicians and consumers on the number of vaccines, timing of vaccine with the cancer therapies. So these are all some of the guidance document developed by, developed by the group and they are available in the Cancer Network website. And the most recent document developed was providing some advice on appropriate timing of imaging. Many cancer patients undergo scans, either a diagnosis and for follow-up and surveillance post-treatment as well as response assessment during treatment. During, uh, I think, like October, November last year, there was an international crisis with radio, radio contrast because of supply chain issues in China. We had to budget the number of scans we could do using the dye available nationally. And it was uh, very well received by the cancer community in the state in trying to have some evidence-based information available to help the practice. These are some of the pieces of work done in relation to COVID-19. Next up is another important work developing standards. As you would know, through the last 10, 12 years, SA has had a, a checkered history in terms of cancer therapies. You, you may remember the cytorabin dosing issues. It all led to various reviews and SA has had additional recommendations put forward by those reviews. However, they were not captured by the National Standards for Systemic Cancer Therapy. So we had, we had convened a group which helped us to release a supplementary standard for the national standards. We also worked on having a standardized consent form for systemic cancer therapies. If you go to Flinders where I work mostly or go to Royal Adelaide, you may see a different version of consent forms for cancer therapies. Prior to having an harmonized version developed by us, those variations were quite drastically different to the one which we would have had in different networks. So having a harmonized version made it easier to have a simpler template for every election to utilize in the consenting process. Still in paper form, one of the issue we find is, I can't tell you whether it has been universally adopted. Uh, I'll need your help if you're working in, your, in the LHNs and if you're seeing a different form being used, it may be worthwhile to take it up to the relevant people within your LHNs. The most important piece of work, which has been brewing for almost two years before we had resources provided by Wellbeing SA, and Department of Health was South Australian Cancer Plan. It, it was challenging to note when I started, SA was one of the only state in mainland Australia which did not have a cancer plan since 2016. There was a draft version developed by SA uh, Cancer Services before it was dissolved, but never saw the light. So we are hoping by uh, the last quarter of 2023, we will have the South Australian plan released along with an implementation pathway for the planned projects. Just again, a shout out, the USA web pages are currently open for your feedback and inputs. There are virtual and in-person workshops are also happening this month. Uh, yesterday, there was the first workshop in Mount Gambia. 
I think tomorrow is in Wyala and next week is in Adelaide. So please put forward your interest for some of the workshop, which are, we, we have spots still available. In person one, I think it's on Wednesday next week. I'm not sure if there are any spots available. Another major piece of work, what's happening through the cancer network is uh, streamlining com mutations for some of selected cancers like ovarian cancer. This piece is led by Dr. Erin Dow from Adler Genetic Unit in Carlin. A working group has been set up. The end result of this would be to have a streamlined approach for testing genes like BRCA gene, which will help to identify appropriate cancer therapies for women with ovarian cancers and Lynch syndrome gene testing as well for people with uterine and colorectal cancers. So the, at the end result of this, we will have a straightforward, simpler process for getting consent and testing to facilitate rapid treatment. We're expecting this project to be completed early next year, uh, and there is a large amount of work being done behind the scenes to get it out in the public soon. There are other ongoing projects in different phases. I spoke about the clinical collector registry where CIH and Cancer Network are contributing towards stakeholder engagement, while the main program is run by Wellbeing SA. MDT platform has been a long drawn process for the last two years. We are trying to get uh, buy-in from various stakeholders as well as trying to find the right platform which can be used across different uh, multidisciplinary team meeting. That's what MDT stands for. The last count, we had close to 55 MDTs happening in different cancer types, either once a month, some of them happen once a month, once a week. Having a single platform which would capture information and support discussion during the meeting, as well as release guidelines in, in terms of treatment plan for the individual patient would be useful. And more recently, uh, one of the smaller pieces of work is around having access to a list of actively recruiting cancer clinical trials for healthcare professionals. So until six months ago, uh, even though there are trial units existing in different hospitals within SA, both public and private, there was limited up-to-date visibility of the trials and which were actively recruiting. It became quite challenging for healthcare professionals to even know where the trial is open if they have to refer a patient. So having this list released monthly through the help provided by every clinical trials unit has been a big success as provided as feedback provided by the users. It's not yet available for consumers, mainly because of the technical details available at the moment. We do have plans to put the list up in a searchable format outside in the public domain through support from Office for Research and Department of Health again, having this resource is going to take a bit of time to try and work out the exact tool to make it easier for searching both healthcare for healthcare providers and consumers. Last but not least, patient reported outcome measures and patient reported experience measures is a big piece of work done by CEH and Cancer Network is contributing towards those implementation by identifying ongoing prompts being done in clinical care as well as supporting its implementation in the near future. I'm not able to provide you up-to-date information, but the last what I heard was the software has been identified and will be uh, informed to general public in the, in the coming weeks, if not a couple of months. What is in store for future? We recently had a workshop and there was I'm trying to move this away. We have had close to 20 odd projects being discussed at length by the steering committee members and identified the top three projects on the left there, a project which will facilitate cancer care coordinators and navigators establish and support 
cancer care through its continuum. Another big piece of work which has been identified uh, something need to be done in the immediate future is uh, data linkages across cancer. And we're calling it as big data linkage uh, and setting up with infrastructure support. Another ambitious idea at the moment is still an idea. Number three, the integrated statewide cancer service. As you know, 10 health networks each have their own way of doing things. We still provide the same care, same employer. I've had colleagues who work in two different networks having to submit two different timesheets every fortnight. The, the wish is, can we have an integrated statewide cancer service to make it seamless for healthcare providers as well as patients to move from one health network to another. At the moment, if you have to refer a patient to a country hospital, have to send a separate consent form, even though the same chemotherapy was administered in the metro hospital, two different consent forms just because they're having treatment in two different locations to receive the same drugs. These are all some of the challenges we face in clinical practice. The, the table on the right shows the planned other programs and projects. Again, many of them still in its infancy in terms of ideas, as some of them have been going on reasonably well, like survivorship care program happening at Flinders, can you expand it to statewide level? Another program which is running from Flinders is the precision dosing program. Geriatric oncology program running very well in Carlin has not been replicated in other health networks. So how do we make it statewide? Similarly, using radionuclide therapies, Taranostics number 18 there is, is delivered for one of the cancer types at Queen Elizabeth and only a clinical trial at the Royal Adelaide. So no other hospital has got facility to deliver. Number five, the CAR-T therapy program. We don't offer CAR-T as clinical service, just as a clinical trial in one of the hospitals. So we see such uh, inequity in access to care. How do we address them all? And, and that's where the biggest challenge, we need infrastructure, we need resources, we need time mostly. back. In terms of uh, grouping those projects, this is just the same uh, projects. We try to group them as health service related projects, big data linkage projects, education workforce training as well as consumer information, and number of clinical programs which will have a statewide lens and deliver across different networks. I'd like to highlight a couple of important ones which I think need to be addressed immediately. One is the CAR-T program, which has been going on through a business case. It hasn't been successful as yet through Carlin. We're having our first meeting hopefully next week with the key stakeholders to start the ball rolling in terms of how do we make it happen in SA. Just for information, currently people with acute leukemias, if they, if they have clinical need to receive party, they have to travel interstate and patients and families, children with cancer, leukemias especially, and adults, when they receive this therapy, they have to stay interstate for four to six weeks because of the expected complications post party therapy. Uprooting the whole family for those many weeks, challenging as you could understand. Mm -hmm. Another important piece of work i like to highlight is the uh, integration of artificial intelligence in not just radiology, but also for biobanking and other reports, which may be potentially linked to MDTs, another major piece of work we're hoping to deliver through, hopefully through cancer plan. Last, just to show what other things as a chair of the cancer network, I do contribute as the jurisdiction, jurisdictional reference group member for cancer plan, for the Australian cancer plan. I'm also the clinical rep for SA for the Australian teletrials program and B BRAC comprehensive cancer, uh, comprehensive cancer center steering committee and the representation from the cancer network point of view. At a national level, there is a, a working party being established for national comprehensive cancer center networks. So this is this is the short list of additional activities either myself or steering committee members are contributing.
I'll finish up saying it's been an amazing time. Despite COVID, we managed to do a lot of things. At least many things have been in the initiation phase. If you're interested to know more about these projects, we have time to talk now. And if you have any further questions after this presentation or this program is finished, you can email us. Please do visit the website there and look at other networks, what projects they're doing as well.